Okay, geometric probability. So basically, you probably have no idea what it is. I'm going to tell you what it is and show you how to calculate it. And it's actually a pretty easy one for today. So it's the area of what you want divided by the total area. That's pretty much what all geometric, or excuse me, what all probability is. It's what you want over what's possible. It's just that you'll have a picture. And let's say that your picture is a rectangle, and this is 10 by 5. Then the area of the rectangle would be what? 50. And then let's say I say part of it's got a triangle cut out of it here, where this is like 3. Would this triangle have an area of 15? True or false? False. False. Good. It's 15, and then what? Yeah, 2 and a half, because you split the 15 in half. Okay, because it's the area of the base times the height divided by 2. The area is, sorry, base times height divided by 2. So this would be 7.5 out of the total, which was 50. And do you get that the hitting probability hitting that is 7.5 out of 50? It's what you want to hit out of what could hit. That makes sense? All right, now, keep in mind, in these kind of geometric things, if you steer it, if you steer towards that, like, you know, let's say that you're dropping out of a helicopter and you aim, you can actually aim even without a parachute. You can just lean to the side. And if you aim as far as dropping on something, it's going to totally change your probability. If you're aiming to drop the ball in the little hole, of course, that changes your probabilities as opposed to randomly just throwing it up in the air and seeing what happens. Okay? So these are all assumed to be random because otherwise your probability would not be 7.5 out of 50. It's probably pretty easy to hit that from the air if you're aiming for it. Okay, so here's a more complicated looking one. Do you remember how this is not 10 times 8 would be 80 or you'd be including all of that? So how do you do the area of that purplish looking thing? It's not 80. And the, eight, the 10 was too big and the 6 is too small. Can't use 6 times 8. So you average them. Good. So 10 times, not 10 times 6, 10 plus 6 divided by 2. So that's 16 divided by 2 is 8. Do you get how 8's a nice happy average of 6 and 10? And then 8 times the 8 makes 64. The area of this purpley region, then, I'm shading the whole thing in, would be 64. That's what's possible. Now, what's the area we wanted to hit? Well, it says in the triangle. So the triangle is yellow. So it's something out of 64. Would you finish this one and turn it my way? The area of the triangle. I hope you can handle an area of a triangle question. That's it. Nice job. Correct. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. You can't read yours in the back. Can you zoom in on it a little bit more so it's a little bit bigger? Yes, that's it, that's it. Yep, yep, yep. Half of it, don't forget to do half. All right, so 6 times 8 is 48. Why can't it just be 48 out of 64? Because triangles are base times height divided by 2, so divide this by 2. 24 out of 64 is the right answer. Any questions on that one? Just what you wanted, which is to land in the yellow, divided by what's possible. There's always a bigger area and a smaller area. All right, this makes it a little more creative because you're going to end up with part of a circle as your bigger area. Do you get that this goat, if he walks as far as he can on the leash, he's going to be able to get all the way to there, and then he'll be able to go around the barn on the other side and get all the way to here? Do you get that we have more than half of a circle there? How much of the circle can he actually walk in? Three-fourths of the circle. Good. So if we only knew the area of a circle formula, what is it? The area of a circle is pi r squared. In this case, the area he can do is three-fourths of pi r squared. You with me so far? Three-fourths of it because he can't. Why can't he go in the last one-fourth? That's the barn. That's a fourth of the circle that he can't go in. If I extend the circle out, see? And how do I know that? Because that's a 90 degree angle. Who centers at the circle. Or a circle. It's center. Ah, the angle is at the center of the circle. 
All right, so if it's a 90 degree angle in there, it's a total of 360. We know that that's one fourth of our circle that he can't go in. So what is the radius of our goat's circle? 10, so it's 10 squared, which is 100. So it's 3 fourths times pi times 100. I'm going to choose to rearrange it and go 3 fourths of 100, which is 75. My area is 75 pi. Could I actually get a decimal for that with a calculator? Yes. You may want to borrow a calculator right now or take one out if you have one, which is, of course, what I prefer. Put your calculator out. I'll pause for a second while you do. Okay. So once you found the pi button on the calculator and you go 75 times the pi button, it should be, I don't know, some about three times as big as 75. 230? Okay. Good enough. How about we round it to 236? So 236 is what's possible. Now, that means the goat can eat from 236 square feet of ground. That doesn't sound like a probability yet. Divided by... Yep. What's on top of it? 15. By 15? Because this is what I want which goes on top, over everything that was possible is all this stuff from in here. Everything that's possible goes there. So 15 out of 236, and you take a calculator and actually divide them. Now, we already rounded that first number off, which is kind of dangerous. Ideal world, you don't round anything until the very end. But assuming for a moment we rounded, what's 15 divided by 236? Say it louder. 0 06. That means there's about a 6% chance that he's going to actually end up eating from the dandelions. Now, of course, goats are not totally random. But if he likes dandelions, then there's like a 100% chance he's going to eat it. Right? If he doesn't like dandelions, then he's probably not going to eat it. It goes through like a lot of, a lot of weird things. They, they're known for eating just crazy things. Yes? Uh, yes, we did. Otherwise, it would have been oh, the whole pi r squared. But we only did three-fourths of the pi r squared, see? Otherwise, we could have done pi r squared minus a fourth of pi r squared. That would have been another way to subtract off the barn. But It's a semicircle, if that's what you mean. This is a sector of a circle, if that's what you mean. Yep, very good. We subtracted off that sector of the circle by doing three-fourths of the circle. All right, good enough on that one. So, I... Uh, Here's a graph formula to answer this. Probability that x is between 0 and 4. Okay. If it's combos of numbers x and y, and we also have to assume that they have whole number combos. I'll give you an example. Where would 2 comma 2 be? Well, you go over 2 and up 2. I don't know. Can you actually see the little lines that are inside the yellow shape or not? Uh, can? Okay, good. So then you know that 2, 2 would be inside our little yellow shaded region. Okay, so the graph of the shaded area at the right, which is the yellow area at the right, which, by the way, has a base of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 squares, 3, 4, 5 squares this way, 8 and 5. If we average them, we add them together, it has 13. It's kind of a pain. I wish they would have used a nicer number, but I didn't count that wrong, did I? I think that's yeah, still 8 and 5. So... That means that it's 13 and then average of those. Oh, is something wrong? Okay, it's all right. I think it's 8 and 5. Like, we're talking not dots, we're talking squares. 1 square, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 squares. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 8 and 5 makes 13. Half of that is 7.5, I think. No, 6.5. 6.5 times 1, 2, 3, 4. 6.5 times 4 would give me the area of the whole yellow region. Why does that matter? Well, do you, the way I'm reading it is that the yellow area is the only thing possible. Like, you've got to stay inside the yellow region. I could be reading it wrong, but it, should, it says the graph shaded shows all possible combinations. So those are the only ones possible. So what is 6.5 times 4? 
somebody with a calculator, what is it? 26. So there's 26 yellow squares that are possible. Now remember, these are not really squares. We're talking about points. Okay. And a point would be a spot like 2 comma 2. Like this spot right there we talked about before. All right, what's the probability that x is between 0 and 4? Well, between 0 and 4, does that look like I just divided this in half? Yes. No, 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 not so. All right, good catch. You're on your game today. Because do you get that this triangle over here is different than that triangle over there? All right. So let's just take the area on this left side of it. Would you agree that I just boxed in a rectangle? A 2 by 5, which makes 10. And then this is a 2 by 1, 2, 3, 4, I think. 1, 2, 3, 4. 2 times 4 is 8, and then you cut it in half is 4. The area of that is 4. The area of that was 10. Do you think that that, I think that that's 14. Isn't it? What is it? 2 by 4 is 8, and then half of that is 4. We have to do half of it because we're doing a, a triangle here. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. And I saw this 5 here, and I disagreed with you right away. Thank you. 2 by 4 is 8. Thank you. That's okay. Okay, good. Uh, it's both of our fault. 8 and 4 makes 12. There we go. 12 in the red shaded area, which is the, what they wanted. And that was 12 is what we wanted out of what? Out of 26. Could I reduce that? Yeah, I would look to reduce it. But you know what? By the time you're done, you got to put it in the calculator anyway. It doesn't make much sense to reduce it and then put it in the calculator. You might as well just put it in the calculator. So go ahead and put in 12 divided by 26. What'd you get? Ms. M? Raise your hand if you got 46% for that. Okay, good. So 46% chance that given that you got a number that was between 0 and 4, and that might, that's, this is, by the way, kind of playing a little loose with this, but it can be 0 and it can be 4. Because technically, if you're between 0 and 4, technically you can't be 0 and you can't be 4. But I don't think they meant that, so. All right, greater than 4. Well, then you're just doing this. I'll shade it in yellow. Or I can't do yellow. I'll shade it in green. That area, which is not going to be 12 out of 26. Go ahead and figure that one out. The green area is what we're doing now. Okay, one, two, three, four is a base, three on the top. If I add them together and divide by two, that's an average of 3.5 base times one, two, three, four, two, three, four, four times 3.5. Do you get what I just did to get the area of the green thing? The 3.5 was the average of this base with 3, and this one was 4, and the average of 3 and 4 is 3.5. So I did 3.5 times the height of this thing, which is 4, and that's what gave me that. So I think I can do this in my head. 4 times 3 is 12, and then 4 times a half is 2. So I think that's 14. Raise your hand if you had 14. Okay, awesome. So then it's 14. Let's put a 1 there. 14. Out of what? And it's 26 because that was the whole thing, the whole yellow thing. And then you, you could reduce it, but it's even smarter to just use the calculator to get the decimals because you're going to be doing decimals all day. All right. So this is just a reminder about contingency tables. Now, this is cholera back in 2004. And uh, cholera is a nasty disease. What's one that kind of came more recently than that? Zika is pretty fresh. You get your first chance to get, many of you get your first chance to get Zika here this, as soon as we start getting mosquitoes. Because there, 
there have been cases in Minnesota, but just to clarify, it's not like th that the case that came from Minnesota, the person got it somewhere else and then came to Minnesota, but all it takes is let's say, again, this is not likely, but your neighbor has Zika because they visited Costa Rica and they got it there. Okay. And then you, you get bit by a mosquito, which then was bit, or I'd say the guy who had Zika, let's say it's me, gets bit by the mosquito and you got to get bit by the same mosquito. Okay. So the probability of that is pretty low. Okay. But once it's kind of in the Zika population, like in the local population of mosquitoes, uh, then, you know, it can be scary because then it can start spreading a lot faster. But right now we've only had like two cases in all of Minnesota. There's four, no, it's almost, I think there's more than 5 million people in Minnesota now. So uh, it's only a two in 5 million chance, which you have much better chances of like drowning uh, this summer, just randomly than to be bit by a Zika born mosquito. And even if you get Zika, it's not like a life threatening thing. Yes. Right. The biggest scary part about Zika is if you're pregnant. Go ahead. Interesting. Because there's false positives on the test you're saying? Wow. Make a new test. So, anyway, Zika may not be the greatest example. There was another terrible disease that ravaged uh, countries just a couple years ago. Do you remember there was a chance? We were a little afraid <clears throat> there was a chance that it was going to come in the United States, and it did in Texas. Ebola. Ebola, yes. And that one's much, much, much scarier than Zika because you get that one and you might die. Zika, you might get a headache. And the only, the only scary thing, like you said, is if, you're, if you were pregnant, yeah, I would be scared of Zika because your baby can be... Uh, can, have a terrible brain syndrome. Not guaranteed either. It's just a probability thing again that they might get this lifelong brain defect. So, so what they, they, they don't know. So the, the, I, the her number I heard was two years, but I think they're not sure yet. Maybe it's 18 months. Maybe it's, you know, but the, the, the information on Zika in particular is changing all the time. But there was a country, I think, was it El Salvador? I don't know for sure, but I know there was a country just within the last couple of days that just told all of the people in their country, we suggest you don't have a baby in the next couple of years. That's a big wow, isn't it? I mean, just think about what that, that actually, if people actually followed their government's advice, uh, they might have a huge, like, gap in babies there. Can you imagine, like, what a concept? Like, at schools, there could be, like, no second graders. Because that year, everybody decided not to have kids because they were afraid they'd have. But on the other side, if the government says nothing, what if they end up with like 500 kids that are born with this terrible, you know, brain defect? You know, that's not good either. So I think that the idea is they were saying, well, we just want to warn you that it's very dangerous to have a kid right now if you have Zika. So anyway, I'll let, right now we in Minnesota here don't have to worry about that yet, but... There's been a couple cases, so they'll keep a close eye on it, I guarantee you that. All right, so look at this little chart here for a second, and let's say that random person from this group, automatically, I know what it's out of. Do you? If they say random person from this group, you just look for the biggest number on the chart, and that's the grand total. It's out of 818. That's what it's out of. Now i got to figure out what I want. The probability of someone who is infected with cholera. Infected, infected. Are these people infected? No, they were not infected. Were these people infected? So is it 3 out of 818? No, because there's another group that was infected. And then the grand total is this. So 69 out of 818. Raise your hand if you would have got that one right. Okay, good. So what if they narrow it down, though? If you're choosing from the people who were not infected... As soon as they said, choosing from the people who are not infected, do you get, I'm going to circle this and cross these out? Because those are the only numbers you can use. So you get tempted sometimes to use a different number, but this says we're only picking from the people who are not infected. What's the probability they were inoculated? 
Okay, then inoculated here out of 749. So 276 out of 749. I really think crossing off the numbers in the chart that don't work anymore is a really good technique, or at least circling the numbers that you can pick from. All right, that's enough review. There's your worksheet, 12.1b, and that basically is probabilities about areas and I have a few on there that you can skip. So once you find it, now I will too. Okay, so the first few here are really easy. This one, I don't even care what the area of the whole thing and the, what I wanted are because I can just see it. What's the probability that the shaded one? It's a half. But if I needed to get the numbers and, and divide them, I could. I'd find the area of the circle, and then I'd figure out half the area of the circle. And that, this is really dumb. It's still a uh, half. Okay, so instead, just go with your brain. This one, you can't just say for sure, oh, that's half as big of the total, right? You can't do that. So we got to do the area of the whole thing, which is what's possible. 5 times 8 is 40, classic mistake right there. Why? Divide by 2 because this is a what? It's a triangle. Okay, so this should be out of 20 then. And what's the shaded region? Again, classic mistake would be to say 6. So I go, oh, 6 out of 20. Why not 6? Because it's a triangle, and so you go 2 times 3 is 6, and you divide it by 2. It's 3, and 3 out of 20 actually is your answer. Okay. All right. So it's that easy. Uh, when you get to the circle one, sometimes people get confused by the circles in the circles. So let's talk that through for just a second. So if you have a circle, do you get that the area of that is pi r squared? you have that one memorized? I hope you do. Okay. But what if I only want this D circle, not the, all the other circles inside of it, just this ring that I just shaded in there? Would you agree that's the D circle and then subtract off what's inside it? So therefore, the D circle minus the, the C circle. That would give you just that ring if you wanted it. But what if you win as long as you, like somebody says, you're so bad at this, I bet you a buck you can't even hit the circle. Well, then it's all of this, which would be the D circle. But what's it out of? They guarantee you, for some reason, because some people are actually this bad, that you will hit inside the rectangle. Okay? So then you'd say the D circle divided by the rectangle, which is out here, which is like the wall that it's on. So then if it's just section D, like this right here, random dart will hit land in section D. If it's section D, that, that sort of... I don't know, this isn't a great question because it doesn't really mean, it doesn't say this, but what it means is like section D, like that, like that ring. Okay, so we'd have to go, what I want is this circle of D minus C, and I can divide it by the whole thing, which is, by the way, 24 by 30. So I have no clue, you use a calculator to figure that out, but... And figure out the area of D, which is pi r squared, and the area of C, which takes away this, I'm going to call it the green area. Take away the green area from the D circle. And the radiuses of the circles are all listed up in here. So hopefully that those tips will help you to get those right. Then there's a couple that you can skip. And specifically problems 11 and 12. Just have you do one problem of that type, number 10. Skip 11 and 12, and you may also skip B and D in this last question. B and D. If you don't get number 16, don't lose sleep over it. Uh, it's just it, it 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 can be confusing, and it's not super important. I could teach you more about that tomorrow. But B and D on the very last problem, skip B and D. And then also skip 11 and 12. That's all I got for you for today.